Everyone in our generation grew up with Michael. It was huge. I mean, I have pictures of me with the Thriller jacket. <laughs> cheesy, not cheesy. The reality was I had the Thriller jacket. I never had the sequin <laughs> glove. I wasn't that level, but I had the Thriller jacket. And I had all those moves. I mean, I've grown up as a professional b-boy in New York City. Michael inspired a generation of people across. I mean, we grew up watching him on TV as a kid. And then all of a sudden, he was, you know, he was taking it to the streets. And he was really the performer in a lot of ways that brought street dance globally. I mean, Popping Pete was one of his teachers. So was Popping Taco. You know, so he was learning from the best people in the world. Then he was taking his R&B, funky James Brown style and taking that to another level. So people weren't fortunate enough to be able to watch Popping Taco and Popping Pete. But we all saw Michael, and he was so crisp and pure when he did the moonwalk on Motown's 25th anniversary. That was it. Showing for the first time ever my tribute painting to the late, great, and when I say great, I mean the greatest performer ever in the history of the world, Michael Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Michael Jackson. I basically painted him with his face shrouded in darkness, so you can't tell if it's the new Michael, the old Michael, uh, because really, I wanted us to project our image of what we felt about Michael, you know, as opposed to everything else. And, uh, and I, I painted him on stage because he said that was the only place he ever felt comfortable was on stage, and that was his home. And off of stage, he just wasn't really comfortable, you know, because so many people wanted so much from him. And he, you know, ever, since Jesus Christ, he was the most famous person to ever walk this planet, really. And you will never have somebody like that again. I will tell you that it was a piece of inspiration. I work in a very traditional, classical manner that a lot of the masters used to work in, which is, you know, a lot of thumbnails, getting the composition. And when you feel the composition, you go into your black and white studies, and then you go into your color studies, and you find the temperature and the hue of the piece and the time of day. But with Michael, it was like, you know, I just felt it, and I just had to do it. So there was no, no real studies. It was a pencil drawing, and then I just went up to do it on canvas. It was like a real intense thing where I just didn't even move from my easel for a very long time because I got as much Michael reference as I could get, and I just really wanted to do a, a universal portrayal of, of Michael. And the people that I've shown it to have felt very strongly that this image is almost the quintessential, iconic Michael image of our generation. But really, I want Michael to be remembered as this character, you know, at this time for his greatness, you know, forget about everything else. You're just gonna remember the genius. He was so sensitive, you could feel the sensitivity in his voice. And he's just a virtuoso, man. He was like Mozart. Michael is the real deal. Michael was chilling with James Brown, learning from Smokey, you know, the best of the best, and then took it to another level. He trained with Popping Pete and Taco and Smokey Robinson and James Brown, and with a natural genius virtuosity, you take that and you put that in a bottle, and you have the greatest performer ever. Because he is the last of some of the greats. I call him the king because I think he was the king. 